once again to the Baseball America video podcast. Kirk Kenny here with Aaron Fit as usual. We had an hour and 34 minute rain delay, but then it was game two. Let me double check here. Yes, Texas five, LSU one was the final score. This not four to three. Not four to three. Five to one, Texas won. The series is now knotted. Story of the game had to be Texas starter Taylor Youngman win a complete game five hitter. First complete game at the World Series in three years. Aaron, what can you say about his performance? He was masterful, Kirk, just masterful. Um, you know, he really kept those LSU hitters off balance all game. Especially, I thought, after the third inning, he just took over this game. Uh, escaped the first and third jam after allowing a leadoff triple uh, to, uh, I think it was DJ LeMayhew. It was DJ LeMayhew to start that third inning. He just buckled down and um, he struck out Micah Gibbs on a high fastball to end the threat. And from there on, I thought he just kind of cruised. I mean, there were a couple of little situations where LSU threatened a little bit. Uh, but That's where his defense picked him up. His defense picked him up, and you know, and, and LSU just never really got close. It seemed like Youngman just kind of rocked them to sleep. I was really impressed, Kirk, with the way that he mixed. I mean, it was he had the sinker going, especially against those left-handed hitters running the two-seamer away from him. He had a great changeup going today, which I think was cr critical. Uh, he had his, his breaking ball going very effectively. He could add and subtract from it. Uh, just really locating his pitches down in the strike zone. Much better performance than we saw from Taylor Youngman yesterday. He was the story of this game. So obviously he had an effect on the Tigers, but they just didn't seem to be themselves tonight. They had won four games in pretty stunning fashion here at the World Series, but tonight they just weren't themselves. No, they weren't. I mean, this is their uh, first time they lost in 15 games, and it's hard to go that long uh, without a hiccup. And it's, you know, give, give LSU credit for playing so consistently down the stretch, but uh, I thought they were flat tonight. I really did. You know, it, it started with the, the first batter of the game when Austin Ross issued that four-pitch walk right off the bat to Michael Torres to start this game off. Um, you know, Paul Maneri even said it seemed like LSU was back on its heels right away after that. Um, and, of course, Torres came around to score. And, and you know, LSU was, was kind of playing catch-up from then on out. And one inning, I think they had a leadoff hitter get a triple. They couldn't yeah. get him in. Another guy didn't tag and left early at second base. And nothing going there. So it just, just couldn't get anything going. Yeah, they really couldn't. And, and you know, I, I was actually impressed with the way Nolan Kane came in and settled things down. Uh, because it looked like this game could have gotten out of hand for LSU. They didn't have Matty on available. You know, they didn't have any of their, their big guns really to go to. They needed, they needed somebody to pick them up in the middle innings after Ryan Bird struggled a little bit. And Austin Ross didn't really have it. Nolan Kane came in and, and kept the game within reach, uh, but not against Taylor Youngman. Right. Paul Maneri made a point of saying in the post-game press conference that the last six innings they pitched shutout ball, but by then it was too late. They couldn't get anything going to get back into this. Right. Uh, next topic. Texas, two more home runs. I believe that's 13 for the College World Series. So are they going to play long ball or Augie ball tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, Texas right now is really swinging the sticks. And, uh, you know, Coach Guido today, coyly, I thought, uh, gave credit to, to Coach Tommy Harmon, the longtime assistant over there, and also to the, the architects who built this fine ballpark, uh, you know, because this, this is the offensive park, and Texas has taken advantage more than LSU. That, to me, has been the surprise so far. Uh, of these first two games is that Texas has been uh, the mashing team where we thought that was more or less use MO. Uh, you know, if Texas keeps hitting like that, Kirk, uh, with the way that they're capable of pitching, you got to like their chances tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, uh, give us a glimpse of how do you see it all setting up. Give us a look at the uh, two starting pitchers and what do you think is going to happen here as everything unfolds and they go for all the marbles. It's a great matchup. you got Cole Green from Texas, who's become the Friday night guy for them since the Big 12 tournament. You got Anthony Renato going for LSU, who of course has been their Friday night guy all year long. Uh, Renato uh, might be the best prospect in the sophomore class in the whole country. Just a, a really a pitcher capable of dominating Kirk. Uh, but Cole Green's slider is something else. I mean, he's just able to, to really dominate with that pitch alone. Uh, so, you know, I think the starting matchups are, are terrific. But also, all hands are going to be on deck here. Lewis Coleman, I expect to see for LSU. You're going to see Matty Odd for LSU. Uh, for Texas, I mean, you probably you could see Chance Ruffin come back again, I expect. Uh, you know, you'll see everyone in the bullpen with Austin Deshari and Brandon Workman are, will be available. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I, I do think it's wide open. I mean, at this point, I think you've you got to give a slight edge to LSU because I do think Anthony Renato is a little bit better than Cole Green. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, you know, really anything can happen. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's see what happens tomorrow. This is Kirk Kenny and Aaron Fitt for the Baseball America Video Podcast. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Thanks a lot.